And the Crown Estate said very clearly a couple of years ago, there's four and a half thousand megawatts of capacity of seabed that they believe is ripe for offshore wind development. Uh, so we worked very closely with the Crown Estate. So well, if you've got four and a half thousand megawatts out there, here's the network design you would need to facilitate that. There is something like 25,000 megawatts of connection applications seeking about four and a half thousand of actual deployable seabed. So if we were stuck to our old process, me and my team would have been designing a network for 25 gigs of offshore wind in the Celtic Sea, which would be madness, right? Because we know through working with the Crown Estates, there's only four and a half gigs available. So actually we've been able to design a network design that connects four and a half thousand megawatts in Celtic Sea. That's allowed the Crown Estates to then do their seabed assessments as well. So we've done that high level assessment. And what that does then it de-risks the development of the offshore wind. So when now they do lease their seabed and people come forward and go through that seabed leasing process with the Crown Estate, then the developers are able to do that with their eyes open. They know what the network design is, where they're going to land on shore, the route length of the and technology type of the connection to shore as well. And the idea being that a lot of this preliminary work has been done, therefore once the seabed lease is provided, it should be much, much quicker then to get that wind to market.